So should you mine with your GPU to take advantage of historic cryptocurrency pricing as well as GPUs being overpriced and flat out not available? Today we're going to talk about some reasons why it may actually be good and a few things that you really have to be aware of and be careful. So let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Remember to smash that like button and subscribe. Some say that every time you do that, you get a little bit closer to getting a GPU, even if it hasn't been mined on on the secondhand market, but it's gonna work perfectly. So let's get into today's video. Let's talk about specifically, should you use your GPU to mine cryptocurrency? Now, this has been sort of a very hotly debated topic because let's face it, we have a huge amount of GPUs missing from from the gamer market people really can't get their hands on gpus and anytime they see what they call a cryptocurrency miner it's when they show you sort of a, a picture with like 78 rtx 3080s and rightfully so that really makes people very angry and upset because they feel like they can barely get one or two gpus and some people seem to have a direct lead or get a massive amount of gpus therefore leaving everybody out but having said that, that's a certain type of cryptocurrency miner. Those are much bigger operations, and probably you can make an argument that they do take a lot of GPUs away from gamers. But today, we're going to be talking about you specifically, the gamer. For example, if you have one or two GPUs, should you put it to mine and take advantage, perhaps even pay off your hardware? Let's talk about a few important reasons why you should do this. I'm also going to tell you perhaps how to go about doing it, as well as some things you have to be really aware of. So first, what is a reason that you would want to put your GPU to work? Well, if you've been able to get a GPU within, you know, the last few months, let's say you got one last year close to MSRP, or perhaps you paid a scalper, you've certainly paid a pretty penny for that GPU. Let's say if you got perhaps like an RTX 3080, maybe you paid the 700 MSRP if you're lucky, maybe you had to pay $900 to a scalper. Regardless, if you put that GPU to mind, especially with today's prices, you could theoretically in a few months pay off that GPU purchase. Of course, depending on the price of the cryptocurrency, it may actually take, you know, between 6 to 12 months for certain GPUs, but for the most part, you can at least get some of that money back anytime you're not using your computer. Now, that can hold true even more so if you've recently been able to get one of these GPUs, just because the prices have been so insanely high that anything you can use these GPUs for to at least get back some of that cost, I think it's going to be extremely beneficial. While if you bought a GPU today, even at the inflated MSRP prices, chances are you're going to wait a long time to actually pay it off. But depending on the GPU, it's actually still pretty probable you can do it within a year. But even if you don't cover the entire cost, at least you can gain back some of that difference from whatever the MSRP is today to what it probably should have been like last year when they first released. So what's another reason you should probably use your GPU to mine cryptocurrency? I mean, you might as well take advantage of these historic prices. Maybe you want to hold it maybe you want to use it to you know pay off bills or whatever you want to do and it's something that's fairly easy and fairly documented to do now i'm going to tell you a few ways that it's possible to get into this and that way at least you'll have a good idea a starting point you can go and research in more detail how to actually set up settings how to do all these different things and another really good reason is that you actually end up learning a lot about your GPU versus when you're just sort of overclocking it for gaming. For example, when you're mining with a GPU, you're going to know how to sort of adjust and maybe undervolt it a bit. You're going to know how to mess with the power limit so that way it performs better for a certain hash rate. You're going to learn how to overclock your memory. You're going to learn about heat and airflow in the case. All these things become very, very evident when you start cryptocurrency mining because GPUs put out an extreme amount of heat and power, especially some of the newer NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. So if you want to get started, what are some easy ways to start? Now, if you do a lot of research, you can actually set up an independent miner and have your wallet. Let's say if you want to mine Ethereum or something like that, that can work, I think, but it's especially useful if somebody's a little bit more advanced. The program that I've used in the past to sort of mess around with mining and see how it works, back even in 2017, when sort of this first cryptocurrency mining boom happened, that way you put your gaming GPU 
to use when you're not using it is the program called NiceHash. Now, it's basically a program that you download, you set up, run a benchmark on your GPU, and it sends everything to sort of like a Bitcoin wallet that you can then direct it to Coinbase or whatever external wallet that you have. It seems to be one of the easier ways to mine the cryptocurrency. And of course, there are going to be some caveats. So this is something that if you're not comfortable with installing, there's definitely a lot, a lot of stuff that I recommend that you guys read. First of all, when you first start using it, you get all these pop-up notifications that it's some type of virus or something like that, especially on in Windows. So I would suggest you guys read up on their website and look at other sources online. For some reason, a lot of these miners and these programs sort of make Windows think that it's a virus. But as far as I know, um, they're not viruses. It's just sort of how they, they come up on the programs. So you're going to have to, you know, appropriately sort of set up your firewall and your security settings. But just be aware of that because I know that's going to scare off a lot of people as soon as they see these things pop up. But as far as I know, it's fairly normal. But having said that, you do have to be careful because historically, NiceHash has had some problems. I think in 2017, they had a pretty major hack of their own wallet where people lost money. Eventually, they repaid it, but it took a long time. And even recently, they've had a problem with a Phoenix miner, which is one of their miners. I think it just disappeared and they were concerned there were some potential issues happening. So there are definitely a lot of things you have to be aware of. So anything that you want to download and try, please research, make sure you're comfortable using it. But after it's all set up and running, for the most part, it does run run pretty smoothly and nice hash is an easy way to just set it and forget it leave your computer running and you don't have too much to worry about otherwise aside from that but just keep in mind those things that i mentioned there have been some problems in the past so it's definitely something that i urge anybody to have caution and do their due diligence before they actually install and use these programs i'm just going basically from what i've used before so i'm not you know a cryptocurrency mining expert it just seems like something pretty straightforward that works for a lot of people if you're interested in trying nice hash i will leave an affiliate link down below. Now keep in mind, if you do sign up from this link, I will get a small kickback from NiceHash, but otherwise, even with that, do your due diligence, make sure you research. It does have a pretty nice positive upside. You get some money when you're mining with your GPU, but there are certainly things you have to be aware of, different modifications you have to make to your security software. So please just make sure you know exactly what you're doing. But overall, I think it's kind of worth the risk, especially if your GPU is just gonna be, you know, not doing anything at all. And of course, like I mentioned the other alternative, you can download one of the miners directly. You can do a lot of research with that, with you know different Ethereum and different coins and have it sent directly to your wallet. That's gonna be a little bit more work than something like NiceHash, but that's also a possibility. And then here are some other important things that you have to know. Of course, you're gonna be using electricity when you're mining with these GPUs. So you have to keep in mind what your electrical costs are just to make sure that it's gonna be something that makes sense. You can look at different calculators online just to make sure. And of course, you're gonna be tuning your GPU. For example, something like an RTX 3090, you may bring it down to like 73% of the power limit. You may even bring the core clock down because that's not really used in mining, maybe about like negative 200 or negative 300. And likewise, you could also overclock the memory as the memory and especially that GDDR6X VRAM, that's really going to be what helps you in getting better mining performance. Something like that on a 3090, you can, you know, bump it up 700 to maybe a thousand and that way it's going to give you better performance for lower electricity costs. So that's just something to keep in mind. There are many guides for the specific GPUs that you have. All the way going back to the 20 series, even 10 series GPUs, you can definitely tune them up so they're gonna use the least amount of electricity and give you the most amount of hashing power. And usually to know if they're working appropriately or not, you can check what sort of the recommended hash rate is. For example, an RTX 3070 may have a hash rate of around like 60, 59, 60. So if we have one of those and if it's running at that speed, we'll sort of the recommended settings that's the way you know that it's at least functioning as it should and an important thing to keep in mind if you are using gddr6x like an rtx 3080 or 3090 the vram gets excessively hot especially mining for example the t junction temperature of like an rtx 3090 it's going to go all the way up to 110 degrees celsius and what's that's going to do that's going to pretty much thermal throttle so instead of getting maybe the recommended 120 or 115 hashes on like an rtx 3090 if it's thermal throttling it can go down pretty significantly to like you know 100 or even 90 depending how bad it's getting the only way around that some people have found that they replace the thermal pads on the back of the gpu you could also water cool your gpu which not only is going to keep sort of the core cooler it's also generally is going to help a lot sort of with doing new thermal pads on the back of the gpu and everything in general being cooler
cooler will help you keep that T-junction temperature lower and therefore you're not going to get as much thermal throttling and it's something you can run a lot more quietly. Now, keep in mind generally you do want to run your fans a little bit higher depending on the settings on your GPU and the airflow in your case. You may be 70%. Some GPUs, for example, the Founders Edition 3080 and 3090, these specifically almost seem to need 100% fans and they're very, very loud at that type of fan speed. So another very important note and now it makes sense why something like the RTX 3060 and even perhaps the upcoming 3080 Ti where Nvidia has said that they're going to make it less viable for cryptocurrency mining. For example, the RTX 3060 has maybe half the hash rate that it normally would have. Now, you can see, look at the topic of today's video, should a gamer mine cryptocurrency? You could see Nvidia doing that. You're going to pretty much be affecting the gamer the most. In the meantime, GPUs are sold out. If you can find them, the prices are very high and the cryptocurrency prices are extremely high as well. So whatever GPU you have, you might as well take advantage of that or else you're going to be getting all the negatives of paying more for a GPU you or not getting one at all. Uh, you're going to be seeing cryptocurrency prices go up without being sort of having your hand in that market. So you might as well at least put your gaming GPU to use. That way at least you're part of the game and you're going to be less adversely affected by all of these crazy things happening in the world. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below, is mining something that you're considering doing? Is it something that you think is smart to sort of, you know, get your money back? Let me know what you think. Remember to subscribe, smash that thumbs up button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.